Hi YouTube, I've done lots of videos on my kind of various collections of fossils and minerals and that kind of thing um, but this one's going to be about uh, meteorites and tektites so if you come with me a second okay I've got quite a lot of specimens in this drawer um, a lot of them aren't meteorites and tektites but we'll focus on the ones that are initially I'll show you some of the other specimens as well later but we'll concentrate on these for now okay we'll start with this one here um, this is an iron meteorite um, and it's from the Sakota Allen um, meteorite shower um, which is from southeast Russia um, it fell in 1947 uh, February the 12th 10:30 a.m. so they know exactly when that fell and uh, 23 tons of fragments have been recovered from this um, so it's thought to have been like the biggest fall in recorded history um, so not bad and with these obviously because it's an iron meteorite um, it sticks very strongly to a magnet um, so these I mean they're called the coarsest octahedrite as well but they're an iron meteorite so 93% iron in this 5.9% um, nickel 0.42% cobalt 0.46% phosphorus and 0.28% sulfur and um, that's the makeup of this particular um, type um, so these are quite common, you can buy these on eBay and things. Um, and this is a, what I try and do is get a very kind of typical looking example of each type that I buy. Um, so one of the main characteristics with this type are these kind of um, bumps, this sort of bumpy texture on here. So these are called um, regmaglyphs these little kind of hollow dents. Um, they're also called thumbprints because especially like on the bigger specimens it looks like somebody's kind of pushed their thumb into it. Um, so yeah, very typical example. I'll put some pictures from this uh, under my microscope. I'll take some photos and I'll put those up and show you as well so you've got a better idea. So yeah, the meteorite fragments that fell from this particular type um, they covered a 0.5 square mile kind of strewn field and the largest crater was um, 26 meters so 85 foot across so um, um, some really massive um, you know meteorites fell from that okay this next one here is from Campo del Celio in uh, Argentina um, and these fell well, four to five thousand years ago was the actual meteorite um, shower. Um, and this is called a coarse octahedrite. Um, again, it, it's an iron meteorite. You can see how shiny it is. It's very metallic. And this, again, is a very typical um, kind of specimen. Um, so because it's a coarse octahedrite, when you look at it, you can see these kind of um, longer kind of crystal kind of structures to it. And when you look at the other side of this one, there's a much finer um, structure. So this is quite a nice example, really, to be able to see the the two kind of um, different textures. Um, and again, if I get my magnet, you can see it's very strongly metallic um, because this is 92.6% uh, iron, 6.67% um, nickel, 0.43% cobalt, 0.25% phosphorus is the makeup of this particular type. Um, so the meteorite itself is estimated to be 4.5 billion years old, um, formed as part of the development of the solar system. So a nice thing to own, I think, this sort of thing. Um, okay, and the um, crater field uh, is a roughly uh, two miles by eleven and a half miles so pretty big um, crater field with 26 sort of major craters in it uh, the largest one is 115 by 91 meters so absolutely massive crater um, and there's thought to have been 60 to 100 tons of material uh, taken from this kind of area and that is the greatest recovery um, ever basically from meteorite shower um, largest fragments have been 30.8 tons for one fragment 
and 28.8 tons for another fragment so not that you can really call those fragments they're absolutely massive um, okay that's that one and with this I've got some slices as well from this same type um, so if you imagine if you slice that other one what you get is this effect and this is called the Whitman statin effect and it's a kind of a it looks slightly kind of holographic almost where you can see the crystal structures in there and it forms this kind of matrix um, a sort of dark and light um, sort of shiny bits and then I've got some other little pieces as well again showing the same effect and there's another small piece Okay, so it's really nice just to have a few of those in my um, collection just to show what they look like when they're sliced. Okay, these next ones are from a meteorite shower called Chelyabinsk. Um, I've got one here and one here. Okay, so this is quite a recent um, fall. Um, this happened on 15th of February 2013 at 9.20 in the morning. Um, and there was this thing called a super bolide, which is like a massive bright um, thing in the sky that looks a bit like a comet. And uh, it damaged, like the, the actual shockwave from it damaged 7,200 buildings. Um, so it did a lot of damage. And the largest fragment recovered has been uh, 540 kilograms. And it made like a six meter wide hole in a frozen um, surface of a lake. So, yeah, pretty big. Okay, so the asteroid um, that sort of broke up from these, it started off when it was in the sky, they estimated it to be um, 18 metres across, or like 59 feet across. And it had a mass of about 9,100 tonnes. Okay, so that's before it started to ablate, which is just another word for breaking up. Um, and it sort of exploded in what's called an airburst. Um, but these ones, they're, they're only 10% meteoric iron because they're a type called chondrites. So the other type that I showed you that were really strongly um, metallic and you know, stick to a, a magnet really strongly, that's because you know, they're mainly made of iron. These, because they're only 10% iron, when you hold a magnet to them, they still stick to a magnet, but the force that you feel is nowhere near as strong. Okay, so they're nowhere near as attracted to a magnet. Um, what's really nice about these two, though, is that they've got this very definite shape where they're curved on one side and then sort of flattened on the other side. They have this sort of um, rim around the edge as well. So they form this kind of button, and that's formed by sort of flying through the uh, atmosphere like that and, it, and sort of burning up as they come in. Same with this one, you've got this, and I'll put these under the microscope again so you can see them more closely. But you've got this sort of bump in the middle with a ridge around the edge. Um, and then you've got this curved surface again where it's, it's obviously travelled at some speed while it was sort of molten. Okay, so chondrites um, make up 85 to 86% of all total meteorites found on Earth. So the biggest percentage of any meteorites are this particular type. Okay, next we move on to tectites. And I think in a way I almost prefer tectites to meteorites. Um, so this is one called a Philippineite because it's found in the Philippines. Um, this is a very typical one. Again, I'll put these under the microscope so you can see the texture a bit more um, clearly. Um, but what these are, basically like... Um, like a sort of glassy um, substance really and it's not known if they just fall from space or if you know something hits the ground you know like a meteorite hits the ground and then material is shot back up through the atmosphere and then burns up as it comes back and re-enters the atmosphere that that's another theory as to where these come from um, but a lot of them are just sort of blob shaped like this one um, this is another Philippineite, and this is blob shaped. So <laughs> you can imagine that if it was molten, 
coming through the atmosphere and yeah it's got this very obvious kind of shape to it where it's thinned out as any kind of blob would do <laughs> if it was like traveling at speed okay so that's that one um, and then you've got all these like smaller ones with the same sort of like texture if you look at them closely they've all got sort of you know holes out of them and dents and things and they just look like you know molten glass that's hardened sort of suddenly um, quite often they have these long sort of um, fissures down them and that sort of thing um, so that's Philippinite and then you've got this one which is called a Moldavite um, Moldavites are again glassy but they're kind of green so it's probably hard to see in this light but again I'll I'll hold it up to the light I'll take some photos and show you that but this is a typical Moldavite again you've got the sort of bumpy texture with the sort of holes like molten glass and it's this sort of green colour okay and then these next ones are called Australites and they're from Australia um, I've got some really nice examples of these um, they're very kind of typically like black glass again um, if you were to slice these really finely I think they're they're actually like a very dark brown sort of colour fairly transparent um, but when you uh, look at them like this they just look very black so these have got like this one's got a curved surface and again you can imagine it traveling at speed uh, and then you've got these kind of flattened surfaces and this one's got a really nice kind of ridge on the top there um, again a lot of these you could just totally imagine how they've kind of formed flying through the atmosphere of molten um, again this one has got a very obvious blob shape to it and this one is probably my favorite and it's just because I actually found this one myself so I was in Australia and I was told a good way to find these is to look on salt lakes um, because obviously on a salt lake it's all white so anything that's fallen from the sky that's black shows up quite well um, typically the salt lake that we happened to find <laughs> where I decided to look for these was absolutely covered in black stones um, so what I did was I just got a massive bag so I didn't really have time so I just filled the bag with these black stones and then later when I had a few hours to spare I went through the whole bag and every single one of them was just a black stone <laughs> apart from this one where I went hey I think I found one and then we went to the Adelaide Museum and I asked somebody there and they confirmed it as a genuine Australite so I was well chuffed with that um, what I'd love to find at some point is one called a button tectite um, this is a replica button tectite um, if you find one of these they're so rare that just an example like this is sort of two and a half three thousand pounds so yeah you can tell how rare they are but what's cool about these is they've got this very obvious kind of orientation so they've got this this um, curved surface at the bottom so you can imagine them traveling at speed and what happens is as they're molten because they're falling kind of so regularly this lip kind of comes up at the side and forms this kind of um, rim and then you get a, another blob in the middle so they almost look like a little flying saucer as well which is another reason why I really love them so yeah one day I mean I can't see myself buying one at that price but I would love to go back to Australia and have another look it would be one of kind of my ultimate things to find a button tectite so I have got some which are called partial buttons so these kind of they're round and you can make out a sort of a, a ridge but they've lost the actual kind of rim so sometimes the rim breaks off or maybe the rim didn't even form maybe it only formed you know partially um, but I've got quite a few of these because I've I've kind of looked out for them on eBay, looked out for button tectites, trying to get a bargain one and never been able to, but I've got quite a few of these kind of yeah, partial buttons. 
And again, I'll um, I'll put some of these under the microscope so you can get a better look at them. I've got quite a few of those. Um, okay, so a lot of these other specimens in this collection are things that kind of look metallic um, that people maybe might mistake for meteorite, some of them. So these sorts of things, look, metallic looking rocks, these are just hematite. Um, you know, people say, oh, that could be a bit of like moon rock or asteroid or something. They're just really shiny. Um, Again, this stuff is hematite, like really glittery looking. There's so many things that people mistake for you know, meteorites or rocks that have come from space. You can see how sparkly this is, crazy. But yeah, this is just hematite. Um, and then lumpy rocks as well. People quite often say lumpy rocks are meteorites. But this is a rock called goethite. Here's some more examples. You can see the lumpy texture of these. Uh, and then just, yeah, metallic kind of uh, rocks. Anything that looks kind of a bit metallic like this, quite often people will get, oh, that could be a meteorite. Uh, and in some places, obviously, these, these iron kind of minerals and things are really common. Um, Obviously in places like iron mines. So yeah, you've got to be careful when you're looking for meteorites because you can very easily think something is when it isn't. Um, and also, you know, they say a good test is to use a magnet. So these are two that I found that are kind of maybes, like they could be. This one I found in Australia and this has got this kind of stony kind of texture to it. So you kind of think it could be, it's also got some inclusions that you can make out under a microscope. And when I stick a magnet to it, it's magnetic, um, but it's not strongly magnetic. It's more like that 10% um, that one, you know, that I showed you before. It's got that kind of chondrite kind of feel to it but you can see here this top surface looks kind of molten okay and then when you look at the side of it you can see it's that top layer that's got like little holes along this kind of top edge and then they kind of get smaller and smaller as they go down and then this side you've still got the little kind of um, pop marks and the holes but they're really tiny and like I said, there's lots of these little sort of glassy um, inclusions. So this this is probably the one I'm most confident could be a meteorite. Um, then I've got this one, which is it's glassy looking. There's lots of kind of molten looking holes in it. Um, and yeah, when you look at the sort of glassiness of it, it's a kind of a very dark brown looking sort of glass. Um, and then on one side, you've got this kind of very metallic-y looking surface to it. And there are all these little tiny um, balls. I don't know if you can make that out. But it's just like a little uh, brown, almost like rusty looking ball in there. And they're all the way through it. And the balls are strongly magnetic. The actual glassy stuff isn't, but the ball bits are. So that's another maybe. Um, the only problem is that you get a lot of things like slag and that kind of thing. This is just a lump of slag, you know, where it's obviously been molten at some point. So you've got all the kind of holes and you've got all that kind of effect um, and texture going through it. But it's just a lump of slag. Here's another rock that's um, I don't think is a meteorite or anything, but it's got some blobs on it and it's metallic. So quite often you find things that stick to a magnet, but it doesn't mean necessarily that it's fallen from space. Obviously there's a lot of things that contain iron anyway. Um, other things are just rocks with kind of this sort of pumice texture. People quite often will think that those could be meteorites. I found this rock, um, which is all full of um, holes like this. 
and you could go, ooh, that could be, you know, that could have been molten. But I think this particular rock um, was probably mud at some point, and it's fossilised, and I think these are probably worm tubes. Um, I've got other minerals in this drawer that I don't think, obviously, people would get confused for the meteorites, but I'll show you them anyway. So this is magnetite, which is magnetic. Okay, so this one's stuck in with a bit of blue tack, so it's a white tack, so it's not coming up. But yeah, they're all sort of a bit, a bit uh, magnetic. Lots of different ones in here, and they all have these kind of triangular crystal structure, um, or little kind of octahedrons they form. All of that, that whole row there is magnetite, and this is how you can find it in the rock. Just as little perfect kind of octahedrons like that, just running through the stone. You break the stone up and you can pull them out and you have these little perfect octahedrons, little amazing crystals like these guys here. Pretty cool. There's a few more that I found in Australia. Uh, then you've got things like um, iron pyrite, little octahedra there, cube. And these don't stick to a magnet, like fool's gold doesn't stick to a magnet. All of those, even though it's called iron pyrite, doesn't stick to a magnet. Um, and then we've got these other kind of uh, minerals here. Look, interestingly, some of these don't stick to a magnet. They all look the same. They all look like they're limnite. Um, but when I put the magnet on these ones, they do stick to a magnet for some reason. So some do, some don't. These cubes, again, you think they probably would, but they don't. Oh, one of them does. <laughs> one does and all the rest don't. It's weird, isn't it? Um, so it just depends on your iron content, if it's going to stick to a magnet or not. Um, that's like little nuggets of gold and a little platinum crystal and there's a little gold crystal in there as well um, sometimes you get rocks where they've obviously been molten when they formed and you get these kind of folds and ridges and things they're quite interesting um, and sometimes people mistake those for meteorites as well and they've got those kind of more interesting weird kind of shapes to them or like things like holes like that where it looks like a sort of a, a bubble has formed while it was molten. Okay, I'll leave you with some still images and some images under a stereo microscope. This is the Sukkot Allen meteorite. And these shots are of the Campo del Cielo meteorite. These ones under the microscope. Then you've got the slices showing the Widman Staten effect. Then the two Chelyabinsk Russian meteorites, both kind of clearly showing a rim around the edge. This is my little jar of meteorite fragments or shrapnel. Here they are under the microscope, showing some interesting little forms. This is the replica Australite button. And then these are my partial buttons, all showing kind of um, ridges and flow lines. All very similar to each other, very similar sizes as well. Okay, and then you've got uh, more australites here um, with the ridges. This is the one I found. And then we've got like the Philippineites. Um, this is typical textures from Philippineites showing all the kind of um, holes and, you know, little grooves and things out of them. And this is a Moldavite and this is me holding it up so you can see how clear green it is. Okay, check out my other videos on fossils and minerals and that kind of thing. Um, and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And I'll catch you in the next video.